Hey, what's up guys? Patrick here. Moving on to the next section, we're going to discuss linear inequalities, how to solve them. And this is pretty simple, so I'm just going to jump straight into examples. We're going to do four examples in this video. I listed them out here. So starting with this first one, 3x minus 2 is less than or equal to 15. Or another way to word it is to find when is 3x minus 2 less than or equal to 15. So these inequality symbols, these less thans, greater thans, or less than equal, greater than equal to symbols, you want to treat like equal signs. So what we can do, or what we usually do, is we put all the variables on one side, put all the numbers on the other, like we're solving an equation. So this negative 2 would come over, 15 plus 2 would give us 17. And then to isolate for this x, which is what we're trying to do, divide both sides by 3. So our final answer is x is less than or equal to 17 over 3. Now, a couple things I want to mention. This one was pretty simple, so it was pretty easy to do, but they're going to get more complex. And one thing you always want to try to do is to make sure that when you simplify the expressions with a variable attached to them, that when they're simplified, that uh, coefficient in front is going to be positive. Because if it's negative and then you divide both sides by a negative number, what's going to happen is you're going to have to flip the sign. So, for example, let's say that instead of bringing this negative 2 over, we bring this positive 15 over, then we bring this 3x over to the other side. So we'd have negative 2 minus 15 is less than or equal to negative 3x. This positive turned into a negative. This positive turned into a negative. So we'd have negative 17 is less than or equal to negative 3x. Well, with inequalities, what happens is if you divide by anything negative, you have to flip the sign. All right, so since we're dividing both sides by negative 3 to isolate for this x, on the right side, we have to flip this sign. So now instead of being a less than or equal to sign, it's going to be a greater than or equal sign. And then negative 17 over negative 3 gives us positive 17 over 3 because the negatives will cancel out. So notice that x has to be less than or equal to 17 over 3, which is the same answer that we got before when we did it just the more intuitive way, bringing the negative 2 over 17, x is less than or equal to 17 over 3. Notice that we didn't have to flip the sign at all because we are dividing by a positive number. So always try to make sure that the coefficient in front of the variable, once it's simplified, is positive because if it's negative, you're going to have to worry about flipping signs and it's just an extra thing to have on your mind. And then the chances of making a mistake go up. So x is less than or equal to 17 over 3. Now there are other ways to express this answer. This answer here is an interval notation. You can also express this in set notation. So x less than or equal to 17 over 3, that's the same thing as x being an element from negative infinity to 17 over 3. And since it's less than or equal to 17 over 3, that 17 over 3 would be in square brackets. If it was just less than 17 over 3, this would be a circle bracket. Right? So we've gone over set notation before, but now it is going to come back. So sometimes you express it in interval notation, sometimes in set notation. You can also show this answer on a number line. So if we have a number line, the value of 0 is there. 17 over 3 is a positive number. It's 17 divided by 3 is like 5.666, which is somewhere over here. So we'll say that's 17 over 3. And then x values that are less than or equal to 17 over 3, basically anything this way. 
less than 17 over 3. So that's another way to show it on a number line. Now again, because this is less than or equal to 17 over 3, this dot here is circled in. The circle is circled in. If it was less than 17 over 3, this would be an open circle because it wouldn't include that 17 over 3. But since it was less than or equal to 17 over 3, that circle there is filled in at that 17 over 3. So three different ways to express your answer. Interval notation, set notation, and on a number line. Now there's also a way to show this graphically, this inequality, and then the result we got 17 over 3. So the way this would look graphically is we can take this and graph it. This is a line, 3x minus 2. So the slope is uh, 3 and the y-intercept is negative 2. So this line would look maybe something like this. And we have to find out when is this line, when are the y values of this line going to be less than or equal to 15. So let's say 15 is here, that's where the y value is. And if we draw another horizontal line, this represents all of the y values at 15. And then this line here is 3x minus 2. Well, where is this line going to be less than 15? Well, it's going to be less than 15 in this area right here. And more specifically, the x value at which this line 3x minus 2 and this line y equals 15 intersect at is that 17 over 3 that we found. So this line here, 3x minus 2, is going to be less than 15 for x values that are less than 17 over 3. So for all of these x values here, this line is going to be below this line here. So that's another way to show it graphically. Moving on to the second question, just a heads up that I erased that first question we had and I took the fourth one and drew it up here. I'm gonna need more room on the whiteboard for all of these that are coming up. So x minus four is greater than four bracket x plus two. Well, as I mentioned before, you just treat that inequality sign as an equal sign. So it's like we're solving for x. So distribute the foreign side. So we got 4x plus 8. Then at this point, what do you want to do? Bring all of the variables to one side, bring all the numbers to the other side. And as I mentioned, you want to bring the variables over to the side where, where they simplify, you'll end up with a positive value. So notice that we would end up with a positive value for the variables if we bring this 1x over and it becomes negative. So we'd have 4x minus 1x, which would give us positive 3x versus if we bring this 4x over to the left side, because then we'd have 1x minus 4x, which is negative 3x. Then when we're dividing by negative 3, we got to worry about flipping the sign. Now, if it's more complex and it's hard for you to see, what you can do is you can always just pick a side initially and then after you can just rearrange everything. So for example, like let's say I bring this 4x over to the left side and then I bring this negative 4 over to the right side. 1x minus 4x gives us negative 3x. 8 plus 4 is 12. Well, at this point, if you don't want to worry about flipping signs, dividing by negatives, what you can do is now you can just switch up. So negative 3x, bring over to the right side, that would be positive 3x. Bring this positive 12 over to the left side. Kind of got in my way there. Got in my own way. So that would be negative 12. And now you don't have to worry about dividing by negative numbers. So you don't have to flip that sign. That sign can stay consistent. And you end up getting x being less than negative 4. Sorry, negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. All right, so that's another way. If you have a bunch of other uh, terms, can't tell where you'll get a positive value for the variables, 
pick a side and then you can just switch the sides after. So if we did this question the other way, the proper way, meaning that we bring this 1x over, bring this 8 over, we'd have 4x minus 1x, right? This positive 1x becomes negative. Then this positive 8 becomes negative 8. We'd have negative 12 here. 3x, and then notice how this is the same as the second last line that we had in the previous method. So divide both sides by 3, and we end up getting an answer. x has to be less than negative 4. So this here, this answer, is an interval notation. Well, this we can also express in set notation, so x being less than negative 4. Another way to write that is that x goes from negative infinity to negative 4, but since it's just less than negative 4, not less than or equal to negative 4, this ends up being a circle uh, bracket. So that there is set notation. And then we can also express this with a number line. So if we have a number line, value of 0, when is x less than negative 4? Well, this is going to be negative 4 here, but we have an open circle. Because it's not less than or equal to negative 4, it's just less than negative 4. So there's going to be an open dot at negative 4. So, three different ways to express the answer to this. Interval notation, set notation, and a number line. Moving on to the third question. We got 3x minus 2 over 4 is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. Now, whenever you have a question like this where you're dealing with fractions, what you want to do is you want to multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, right? Like we do when we're solving equations. We want to get rid of that denominator. Now, the value that you're multiplying this by, you always want to make sure that it's a positive value, right? So what is the lowest common denominator between 4 and 1? Well, it's going to be 4. So we'll multiply this by 4 and this by 4 here. So notice we're multiplying by a positive value, so we don't have to worry about flipping the sign. Because if you remember, when you divide by a negative value, you have to flip the sign. Also, if you multiply by a negative value, you also have to flip the sign. So here it's obvious that we're going to be multiplying by a positive value, but sometimes it's not as obvious. Like in this example that we're going to get to, notice how there's this negative here. So some people may multiply it by a negative number, which is fine. You just have to remember to flip that sign. So my recommendation is to always just multiply it by a positive number when you're working with inequalities. So when we multiply all of the terms by that lowest common denominator of 4, how many times does 4 go into 4? Well, just once. So we'd have 1 bracket 3x minus 2 is less than or equal to 1 goes into 4 4 times bracket 2x minus 3. And now we just have to solve this like a regular inequality we've been solving before. So this 1 here we can get rid of. You can just write 3x minus 2. When is it less than or equal to? Distribute this 4 inside, so 8x minus 12. And now we have to bring all the variables to one side, all of the numbers to the other. Again, you want to bring over the variables in a way where you're going to get a positive value. So if we bring this 3x over, it becomes negative. 8x minus 3x gives us positive 5x. So let's do that. So we'll have 8x minus 3x, then bring this negative 12 over. So we'd have negative 2 plus 12. Negative 2 plus 12 gives us 10. And then here we'll have 5x. So then to isolate for that x, divide both sides by 5. 
So the answer is x is greater than or equal to 2. So this here is an interval notation. If we want to show this answer in set notation, x is greater than or equal to 2. This should actually be a square bracket here. 2 to infinity. Right? It's a square bracket because it's greater than or equal to 2. If it was just greater than 2, then this would be a circle bracket. It wouldn't be including that value of 2. And then showing this on a number line, this is 0. x is greater than or equal to 2. So this would be at a value of 2, and then it would be all the x values that are greater. Right? So three different ways to express your answer. All right, so moving on to the last example, the fourth example. Very similar to this one. First thing you want to do is you want to get rid of these denominators. Multiply it by the lowest common denominator. Lowest common denominator between all of these will be 12. And you want to make sure that you multiply it by a positive lowest common denominator, as I mentioned over there, so you don't have to worry about flipping that sign. So negative 4 goes into 12 negative 3 times. Then we got 2x minus 3 here, greater than or equal to. Uh, 6 goes into 12 twice. And then we have 4x minus 2. And then same thing as usual, just expand everything. So we got negative 6x plus 9, greater than or equal to 8x minus 4. And then notice how bringing everything over to the, or the x values to the right side will make them positive. So we got 8x plus 6x when we bring this negative 6x over. Then this negative 4 bringing over to the left side becomes positive 4. 13 greater than or equal to 14x. Divide both sides by 14. So answer is when x is less than or equal to 13 over 14. Let's just leave it in fractions. So that's one way to express the answer, interval notation. If you want to express it in set notation, x is less than or equal to 13 over 14. That's the same thing as all of the x values from negative infinity to 13 over 14, and that's a square bracket because it's less than or equal to. And then on a number line, if this is 0, this here would be 13 over 14. It's a positive number, so it's to the right of the 0. And it's going to happen for all these x values here. All the x values that are less than or equal to 13 over 14. So that's pretty much how you solve linear inequalities. So you got to be careful with these denominators. That's when it could get more complex. But you just simply multiply it by a positive lowest common denominator, gets rid of those denominators, and then you just solve them algebraically. Remember, when you're dividing by negatives, you're always going to have to flip a sign. So try to have it that you don't have to worry about that by making sure that the coefficient in front of the variable is positive once you simplify them. But yeah, they're pretty similar to equations. Just bring everything over to one side, all the variables to one side, all the constants to the other and then solve from there.